Okay, welcome back, guys. Uh, week three of the shutdown. Uh, this week we're talking about World War One and how it relates to Texas. So there's, in reality, there's really not too much that happened with Texas, and you're gonna learn in your digital notebook this week about some of the more important Texans and how they contributed to the war effort itself. So I'm just gonna give you guys a really brief overview of World War I. Um, you're gonna learn more about this in the coming years and why it's significant. So to begin with, who is involved? So it, it all begins in Europe and there's, there's a whole history behind how this war came to be. But essentially you have two different alliances. You have what's called the Triple Alliance, which was Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy. And then later uh, the Ottoman Empire, which is present day Turkey, joins them. So these are, if you wanna call them the bad guys, that's kind of what they were. They wanted to expand their territories. They wanted to take over areas. And it was all about nationalism, this pride in our country. So opposite of that, you have what's called the Triple Entente. This is basically an agreement. Uh, that's what Entente means. And that's France, Britain, and Russia. And later, the United States is going to join. Within the last year, year and a half of the war, the U.S. comes in and it, it turns the tide of the war, um, so to speak. So Russia is actually going to experience its own uh, revolution during this time. They're going to drop out uh, halfway through the war, and that's around the time when the U.S. joins in. Okay, so how does it all begin? Uh, it basically begins when this Archduke Francis Ferdinand of Austria is assassinated. And the United States, you know, we had a policy of what's called isolationism. We wanted to stay out of European wars. And we did everything we could uh, to do that. We were still helping out Britain and France and our allies over there. Uh, through you know providing them money and weapons and arms, but ultimately we didn't want to be involved in the war. Well, that's going to change uh, over the course of the war. Germany, especially, used uh, U-boats, which are submarines, and they're going to attack American ships in the ocean. Um, those those transport ships that are providing weapons and arms to the Allies. German U-boats are going to sink these. They're even going to sink a major passenger liner called the Lusitania. And it's going to kill several Americans. A few of them who did survive the, that attack actually moved to Dallas. And the big one, though, is this right here. The Zimmerman, uh, the German Foreign Minister, Arthur Zimmerman, he actually sent a message to Mexico promising them all the territory that had been lost to the United States in that Mexican-American war several you know, years before this happened. Remember, this is 1914. Uh, the, the telegraph is gonna get sent out about 1917. And it's called the Zimmerman Telegraph because it, it gets intercepted by Britain, who in turn shows it to the United States, and it's gonna make the US mad. Uh, people who are against the war, they're gonna suddenly turn around and be all for it because of this telegram. And America is gonna officially declare war on Germany and commit troops to the war effort, okay? So there was already high tensions because of those, those reasons I told you about, those sinking of the uh, American ships, the Lusitania, and Germany basically just held out Europe, held Europe uh, in this deadlock, which I'm gonna to get to in a second. And Mexico was actually going through a revolution at the time. Uh, this is going to lead to problems with the U.S. and Mexico because there's a smuggling operation going on in Texas. Um, but ultimately, Texas Texas supported the war. Um, and during this time, too, Mexicans are going to experience really harsh treatment in Texas. This is uh, going to extend those segregation and Jim Crow laws to Mexico. Uh, or sorry, to Mexicans living in Texas, and they're gonna, you know, they're gonna be mistreated because of this Zimmerman telegraph and this fear of Mexico. So remember, there's a revolution going on in Mexico. People are trying to escape the violence, and so where do they go? They go into Texas. When that happens, you tend to have a lot of tensions and people mistrusting one another and racism and everything in between. Okay, that slides out of place. So what was the war like? Um, basically, they fought 
in trenches. Now this, like I said, this isn't really relevant to Texas history and I'm gonna go through this pretty quick. Um, the way that you had modern, excuse me, you had advanced weapons with outdated techniques. And so the only way that they knew how to fight against this was through trenches. And so you could see right here, this sort of diagram, the trenches were deep, you know, they would have what this area was called no man's land between the trenches. And at times they could be as, as close as 50 feet from one another and never gain an inch. There's no bathrooms, you have artillery shells exploding around you. Uh, you know, people would die and they, they couldn't even be buried. It was muddy when it rained. It was just some of the worst conditions you can possibly imagine. This is a really famous picture of one of the trenches. You've got this guy, people just trying to sleep where they can. Um, there was a movie that came out recently called 1917. Uh, I think I talked to a few of you guys about it. That does a really good job of showing what that was like. Okay, this is another, excuse me, this is another diagram of what it might have looked like. All right, so how did the weapons of World War I look? So you have machine guns. You have rapid fire weapons, and remember they're using outdated techniques. Uh, to break the stalemate, this is when the tank is going to be introduced into warfare. And it's, it's a way to cross no man's land um, and get across trenches. Now this is the big one here is fighter planes. The uh, aircraft have been a relatively new technology. And of course, when you have new technology, people find a way to weaponize it. And so planes are going to be used in a different way. And this is relevant to Texas. Um, because it's something I'm going to show you. And then finally, submarines. Now remember, submarines are not new. Uh, we talked about the CSS Hunley, that Confederate submarine that uh, was the first one in world history that sunk an enemy ship, but it's going to be taken to a new level with these German U-boats. Alright, so what was life like in Texas during World War I? So, in school, Students would receive a 10 minute lesson every day on being patriotic. There's this promotion of American pride and American patriotism. And it, there's also a censorship, meaning they newspapers that were speaking out against the war, who were against it, uh, they were actually being shut down by the government. There was no, you weren't allowed to speak out against the American uh, war effort. So books about Germany were, and its culture are pulled from libraries. Uh, there's a, a big fear, this, German, this fear of Germans in America that there might be some sort of um, German conspiracy to fight the Americans from the inside. And if you remember, uh, down in Hill Country, outside of Austin and all that, uh, places like New Braunfels and Fredericksburg, there's a, there's a large German population that lives there and they're, they're going to experience a lot of um, hatred and difficulties during this time. Uh, there's also a big effort to conserve, uh, sort of kind of similar to what we're experiencing right now with this coronavirus. Um, we want to provide as much as we can for the troops that are being sent over. Remember, millions of American troops are being deployed to Europe. So uh, Texas takes part in this and you know they promote these things where people grow their own food and they would have these things like wheatless Monday meaning you don't eat bread on Mondays or meatless Wednesdays where you don't eat any kind of meat on Wednesdays and so on okay uh, I told you guys about that Mexican Revolution that was going on during this time and there's this uh, very famous guy Pancho Villa he was a Mexican revolutionary and he made frequent raids into Texas. Uh, the United States President Woodrow Wilson, he even, uh, he even sent the US military to try to track Pancho Villa, Villa down, but he never got caught. Uh, Pancho Villa is actually gonna help incite a riot in El Paso, Texas uh, during his reign. Uh, he's finally killed in 1920. This is after the war by the Mexican government. And, uh, I encourage you guys to look him up. He, he was a very interesting guy, uh, and there's even a famous song. It was written by a guy, named, a Texan, Towns Van Zant, and Willie Nelson made a cover of it. So if you want to, the song is called Poncho and Lefty, if you want to listen to that. There's a picture of Poncho Villa. All right, so what else was happening in Texas? We have new military bases. You know, Texas is warm. 
we probably have maybe three months of cold weather a year. And so it's ideal, you know, we don't have snow, so it's ideal for the US military to set up new military bases in Texas and to um, get troops to be trained down there. And so several of them are gonna pop up all around this area. Uh, Fort Worth is gonna be a host to one. Um, one of the ones that lasted the longest is actually Dallas Love Field. That is a major airport and it actually was created during World War One. It was it was being used as a as an experimental testing site for fighter planes, and it's named after this guy Moss Love. There's a picture of it uh, during World War One. Moss Love. He uh, he was a fighter pilot who was killed, and he was the tenth ever to die in U.S. military aviation history in an accident. And so to this day, Love Field is still there, and it's named after this guy and his legacy during World War I. Uh, another one is Fort Sam Houston. That's down in San Antonio, and that's still around today. Uh, it was used during World War I as a basic training site. Uh, today, it's still used. It's actually the headquarters of the U.S. Army Medical Corps. So uh, if you are joining the military and you're training to be a medic or anything that involves um, the medical field, you're going to be sent to Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio at some point to be trained there. So overall, during this war, 8 million soldiers die in World War I. This, to this date, or sorry, up until this point, um, this is the worst war that had ever been fought. It was horrible, a lot of deaths, people are impacted all around the world, and the only thing that's going to overcome this war is World War II, which we'll talk about in about three weeks. Uh, ultimately, the Triple Entente, France, Britain, the United States, we are victorious. And the four years, this is what's crazy about it, is that over those four years of fighting, there was only about three miles of ground that had actually been gained. I mean, they would fight for hours, they would fight for months, they would fight for years, and they may gain about two inches of ground. So ultimately, the results of this war are going to cause a lot more problems in the long run, which we'll talk about in a couple of weeks. But when you do your digital notebook today, you will learn a little bit more about that.